Right, I see uh, Promise Mkwana has just joined us there, the Triple C spokesperson. Uh, Mr. Mkwana, I've sent you the mic to become a speaker. Please do accept the mic this morning to become a speaker, and then you can go ahead with our interview this morning. But also, what's been happening in Zimbabwe, uh, many things have been happening, man. Mm -hmm. I spoke about this, the swearing in of councillors, uh, the swearing in of MPs. I want to ask Promise Mkwana about around that. What's the way forward for Triple C? Are they going to go to Parliament for the swearing in? Mm -hmm. Are they going to go to the chambers for the swearing in? What's the way forward? I spoke about diplomacy right? again. Mm -hmm. Mbalula, Figile Mbalula has been are uh, raving on Twitter, man. What has been happening? Are uh, they uh, writing many things about Zanu PF and Zanu PF? What is as uh, triple C stance there in terms of diplomacy? Mm -hmm. Remember, Richard Ramaphosa is a kingmaker in terms of Sadak again. Mm -hmm. And then, if uh, SG of ANC is speaking about uh, Zanu PF like that, what is triple C stance there? Mm -hmm. uh, please do request the mic, promise me. I want to hear from you this morning. I've sent you the mic. Uh, you can request the mic as well and accept it. Let's go to Mandas before we go to our speaker. The Mandas, good morning. Good morning, Sai. Yes, can you, can you hear me, sir? All right, we seem to have lost Mandas. I can't hear him from my end. But keep on trying, Mandas. There, uh, we can't hear you. Let's try again. Good morning, Mandas. All right. Uh, promise me, Kwanaz, I've sent you the mic to become a speaker. Please do accept the mic say, uh, from your end. That's right. Can you hear me now? Yes, you're clear. Now, please do go ahead with your contribution. Yeah. I wanted to say, I wanted to start with the story that Brighton has been reading about the young man who's been crushing people's skulls and eating up their stomach as well. This is a sad reality in Zimbabwe with the economy uh, going down, down the hill. I think some few years ago, we only had about 11 psychiatrists out of 15 million people in Zimbabwe. Our hospital and health infrastructure, they've just gone downhill. These people are actually suffering with mental health, but unfortunately, they don't have anyone to treat them as well. We had the situation at Nguicheni where people were literally begging to have some food, medication, and stuff like that. And we've just given ZANU PF another mandate to be able to govern us for the next five years. What is going to change? Absolutely nothing. We're just going to have more mental health people walking around the streets untreated. We've got less psychiatrists, qualified doctors living in Zimbabwe, going diaspora every other day. The brain drain is huge, and yet we are just inaugurating ourselves and continue to put ourselves in charge, doing absolutely nothing. 2028 will be around the corner. Nothing is happening. More people are actually getting services is going killing each other as well it's very sad as well um i'm looking forward to be able to hear from uh promise as well to be able to tell us the reasons why uh the triple c didn't actually challenge the institutions such as zach as well challenged the judiciary to bring their presentation and evidence uh, in terms of um going forward with their court challenges as well uh, but unfortunately uh, they chose the Sadak route. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Because um, the current chairman mandate is only running until January. And then the uh, one of the incumbent leader, um, uh, President Mlangagwa, will be coming in as a chairman. Are we going to be able to achieve those things within three months? I do doubt so as well. So hopefully something will change. Um, yeah, that's all what I want to hear. We're listening forward to hear from what Promise is going to be saying and the continuation of arrest of uh, lawyers uh, uh, and what they're going to be changing in terms of our urban areas. Uh, are they going to bring some changes, uh, reducing some of the corrupt uh, councillors who have been running the city councils of Arare and Blawayo? What is really going to be changing within the Triple C? That's all my contribution for this morning. Well, thanks so much, Mandas Douglas, for that contribution. Yeah, our uh, guest just joined us there this morning. Promise Mkwanas, good morning, sir. Mr. Mkwanas, good morning. Okay, well, uh, while we wait uh, for Mr. Mkwanas to join us, uh, maybe let's hear from... Uh, Hold Hello. Uh, ah, okay. I see our guest is here. Good morning, Mr. Mkwanas. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, let's start off with the elections, Mr. Mkwanazi. We saw 23 August going to the polls. Uh, there are many issues that are <laughs> uh, What is your overview and your review of the elections at the Triple C? 
Well, our, our review and overview of the election is quite negative, unfortunately, um, because of the obvious reasons that are now in the public domain. Uh, in particular, the rampant violation of every norm and principle of a free and fair election that we saw, uh, which was carried out not just by Mr. Mnangagwa, but also by some extrajudicial groups like FAV uh, and so on and so forth. And the, you know, the, 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 the implication of the judiciary as well. You know that in the build-up to the elections, we had several uh, cases that were taken up to the court. And uh, curiously, all of them were dismissed by the court, uh, not just from us, but also from other opposition uh, groupings that also took their cases to court. They were all dismissed. So, and Sada came, they observed the elections, the AU came, they observed the elections, uh, the Qatar Center, the EU, and so on and so forth. And there was a round condemnation of the electoral process as not able to meet the, the barest minimum standards of a free and fair election. Hello? So thank you. Uh, hello, yes, I can hear you. Thank you so much uh, for responding to, 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 that, to that question. Now, maybe, uh, you know, after all this has happened now, um, everything else has been going on uh, today. In Blai, we're having um, the, our councillors being, uh, you know, uh, sworn in. And also, uh, there's also going to be uh, the parliamentaries, the 10th parliament will be sworn in tomorrow. Uh, what is Triple uh, C's reaction to this? Are you going ahead? <laughs> Look, our reaction is that uh, the elections in Zimbabwe do not go in accordance with the laws and principles of elections, not just in Zimbabwe, but also in the region. And that I want to underline that uh, very, very paramount uh, position of the party. And in that regard, we, con we continue to say that we must have a fresh free and fair election in Zimbabwe, underwritten by Sadiq, uh, and in which Zek will not be a part, because Zek has been at the center of this whole electoral highest that we saw. Having said that, um, you see, as, as a party, there are areas that we have dominated over the years, which have been our strong words over the years, that they've continued to believe in the leadership of President Nelson Chamisa and President Morgan Shangirai then. We consider them to be our liberated zones. And what we are not going what, what we are not about to do is to surrender that uh, those autonomy zones to the regime of Mr. Mnangagwa. We are not going to surrender our autonomy zones in Bulawayo, in Harare, and other urban areas. In fact, we believe that the victories that we attained in those areas are actually an under-representation of our popularity and what we can do in those areas under free and fair elections. And it is on the same token that President Nelson Chamisa won the presidential elections, despite the fact that the environment was not conducive for a free and fair election. Therefore, we are not surrendering our autonomy zones in parliament and in council, and we are not surrendering our autonomy zone in the presidency, where clearly Mr. Nangagwa did not win the elections.
much. Thanks so much, Promise Mkwana, for that response. Guys, for just joining us this morning, we're talking about Promise Mkwana as the Triple C spokesperson. Uh, we're reviewing the elections and also talking the way forward for Triple C. But Mr. Mkwana, as you are saying, you're not, you're not giving up your own autonomy in terms of uh, the councils and parliament, right? We saw there was an inauguration a few days ago where the president was inaugurated, right? And then today, councils are being sworn in. Tomorrow, MPs are being sworn in, right? In a few weeks to, to come, Emerson Nanga is going to uh, maybe appoint his cabinet. What's the way forward for Triple C now in terms of you guys? What measures are you going to take in terms of engaging the government or engaging in such a What are you going to do as Triple C? Well, the, the, the measures are already in full swing. They are not going to be taken in the future. They have already been taken. Uh, you know that uh, we've got deployees deployed by President Nelson Chamisa into the region. And uh, we know that there is f positive feedback uh, from the region around the issues that we've raised and uh, you can see from the behavior of zanu pf that they are not happy with the discussions that are underway in the region you can also see from mr mbalula uh, bizarre uh, involvement in zanu pf politics that something is cooking so we we, we, we have already started the process of engaging the region uh, and that process is going very well we've also already started the process of engaging the citizens who are at the center of this uh, 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 charade that ZANPF uh, presented to us and we want the citizens to be motivated to insist that their vote must be respected their vote must find expression in Zimbabwe and all both processes are going on very well. You know that we did not go to court. We've put the reasons out there. And I did mention at the start the compromise position of the judiciary in Zimbabwe. Um, and we didn't want to give them the opportunity to, you know, to, 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 to do what we all knew they were going to do. And uh, I know that ZANPF is very upset with that. But our position is clear. We don't take instructions from ZANPF. We make our own decisions on our own terms, according to our own timelines and frameworks. Right, quite interesting. But also, I'm looking at the timeline coming from uh, Prince Tubego Sibanda here, uh, the Binga North Triple C MP, right? I'll just read what, one of his tweets, then respond to his tweets. It says, after the command inauguration, a flurry of illegal command swearings are flowing. More chicken pieces are, but won't be part of them. What does this mean coming from an MP who's part of Triple C? This He says, we won't be part of these inaugurations. Please clarify this. Is there a party position or individual position? We are already, like you saw Mr. Mnangagwa uh, illegally swearing himself in, we were not part of that. When we were not part of that. Because Mr. Mnangagwa did not win any election in Zimbabwe. And the, the, the figures presented by Zek uh, were from thin air. Uh, I think you saw uh, the, 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 the tally, which amounted to 103%, a new mathematical invention. Uh, in the history of mathematics, that uh, you add up figures and they come up to 103%. So we, 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 we are not part of that. We are not part of that. Yeah, well, let's take our listeners there this morning, guys. I'm going, I'm going to give you maybe one minute to ask your questions because we have many requests this morning. Let's go with Bosalani first. Bosalani, please do ask your question. One minute uh, for your question to ask Mr. Promise McConnell this morning. Um, thank you so much, Brighton. Can you confirm that you can hear me, please? Yeah, clear. And please do go ahead. Fantastic. Could I kindly ask as well, Brighton and Nonflantla, that as I give my question, that uh, you'll safeguard me as well, because uh, there are questions that I may ask, which may be seen by those yes, who support sure. Triple C to be an attack, and then they'll therefore feel like attacking me back. So can I be guaranteed your protection on this matter? We yeah, are very safe, ma'am. Please do go ahead. The one question would then give other speakers a chance as well. Fantastic. Thank you. 
Uh, promise, uh, good to see you. Um, I'm very aware of the work you used to do with Tajamuka. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to know, um, when it comes to the change, how is it exactly that you came to be the spokesperson for Triple C? Um, at first I thought it's because Fadzai Mahere was competing um, as an MP, but then I noticed that Ostalos is still the deputy spokes. So why that change? And um, was this change made known to citizens as well before uh, you were put in the position uh, that you've been put uh, in thank you so much thank you so much Pastor. and you can uh, can respond to that promise mkwanazi i'll meet you i can respond uh mr mkwanazi Me? right yeah we can respond yes uh in the political party those that they've been a uh, members or part of a political party there is a leader and um, political parties are not civic society organizations. They are political parties. They have their own modus operandi. They are very um, hierarchical. And the leader of a party can be Triple C, it can be EFF, it can be ANC, it can be ZANPF deploys and redeploys leaders as and when they see fit. And I'm using the word, the term they in deliberately uh, because the leader can be male or female. And leaders must understand and accept that uh, there will be redeployment and deployment as and when it is necessary in accordance with the political judgment and leadership judgment of a leader. I actually don't know why I was appointed, but I was appointed the spokesperson. And my duty as a lieutenant in the party is to deliver on the appointment that the president has conferred on me. And secondly, the, the spokespersons of, of the political parties, they come and go. With Daniel Molekela, he was the spokesperson appointed by the president. With Jacob Mafume appointed by the president, with Fadzai Mahere appointed by the president, you've got Promise Mkwananz appointed by the president. And in, in, at some point in the future, another spokesperson will come. And when the president sees fit that I've done the job that he wants me to do, my duty is to facilitate a smooth transition to the next appointee. So it's it shouldn't it's not a, a train smash that uh, the <laughs> the leaders are appointed and redeployed as and when situations demand. And by the way, there are so many reshuffles that the president has done and is doing. And it's normal. It's a no, no, normal uh, situation in a political party in terms of our internal democracy. And lastly, and more importantly. Uh, my sister Fadzai Mahere was not demoted as many people want to think. She remains an integral uh, player in the party, like I said in our first press conference. And there are may even bigger assignments uh, that the president is going or may uh, assign him. And that's, that's normal. So there's no big deal really uh, in my appointment, neither will there be a big deal in my redeployment. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mkwana, for responding to that question. Um, before I take another speaker, maybe let, let me just ask, um, you know, there's been uh, the talk of uh, structures, you know, a lot of people saying CCC doesn't have structures and all that. Now, uh, going forward, uh, uh, is the party working on having uh, structures? Your question presumes that we don't have structures. And that's problematic because uh, we would not have won this election if there were no structures, if there were no organizers on the ground. Would we have? Certainly not. So, we do have uh, structures in the party. The only difference is that we've got 
you know, structures that you guys are not accustomed to. And President Chamisa has been very clear on doing things uh, in a different way. And uh, I can tell you, uh, without really di divulging the internal strategy, that in my own view, in my own view as Promise Mkwanans, uh, the way that the president organized this party was very effective. It was very, very, very effective. And ZANPF, you saw them, they were in sixes and sevens, singing choruses that the Triple C must have structured. Why? Because they want to know who the chairperson is, and, to, and then they bribe him. They want to know who the secretary is, and then they bribe him. It was not to be, and it will not be. But the structures are there. Right, quite interesting there. The structures are there, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a one and so on. But someone is asking me on uh, Twitter here this morning, Mr. Mkwana, says uh, on the issue of parliament, are you, guy, are you guys, yes or no, are you guys going to go to parliament for the swearing-in ceremony uh, tomorrow, Thursday, yes or no? Why should it be yes or no? There is no yes or no. It's a complex question. It, it doesn't require, it cannot be limited to a yes or no. It's not a multiple choice uh, secondary school examination. It's political processes that that uh, are going to define the future of this country it's a complex question it's a complex conundrum and we are attending to it and i have explained to you that we are not going to let go of our zones of autonomy uh, if you read uh, political scientists they'll tell you that uh, you must consolidate on your zones of autonomy and pursue an, an expansion and an extension on the zones of autonomy of the opponent. So that is the, the guideline in terms of the strategy on, on, on that uh, on that on that on that on that aspect. Thank you so much for that response. Let's go to another speaker there this morning. I'm going to give one minute guys to ask your questions because I have many speakers here, many requests here. Philip, good morning. Please do go ahead to the question to promise some corners. Good morning, good morning. Thank you so much, Mr. Um Right on. Thank you, Mr. Mkwanaz. Mr. Mkwanaz, I just want to ask a simple question. Um, <laughs> we have seen um, um, the Zambian um, vice, former vice president of uh, Mr. Lungu um, being active in this Zimbabwean election. Um, he's not in the government anymore. Um, we have seen Mbalula um, being very active in this, especially supporting um, ZANU PM. Malawian president didn't come. The <coughs> leader of Sadiq didn't come. Are we seeing something new um, in, in in Southern Africa, whereby the revolutionary leaders supporting each other, the opposition supporting each other? We have heard that Zambia is very, very um, um, they, they, are, they, they, they are alert on, um, on, on the coup. Uh, the president of Zambia is saying, be careful uh, mm -hmm. if you are trying to bring a coup in the country. What is happening? You are a politically a young man. You know better than me. Are we seeing something different? Are we a divided a nation now because of Zimbabwe, this Zimbabwean election? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Just to put a disclaimer, I know no better than anybody. Uh, but uh, my, my personal view is that uh, Sadek, one of the things that uh, Sadek can't avoid is an evolution. An evolution in the region as well as an evolution internally within Sadek. Uh, this region is not going to remain static. Change is inevitable. And the sooner our leaders accept and realize that stubborn fact, the better for all of us. Static is not going to be static. It's not going to happen. Static is going to see to change. And we've already seen pockets of change and transformation within the region in Malawi, in Zambia, in Lesotho, and even in Zimbabwe. So it is foolhardy for anybody to hang on to the political hangover of the past. The leaders in the liberation movement, whom we respect so much, 
who played a pivotal role in the emancipation and liberation of Africa, must realize that uh, from that revolution, we are now moving into an evolution. And Africa, and you all agree with me, is the biggest potential in the world. We've got the youngest population, the most energetic population, we probably have the most natural resources, and so on and so forth. The only missing link in all of that potential is leadership. And the problem we have faced over the years is leadership that has hung on to the past and failed to embrace the future. And when we say embrace the future, we're not saying abandon the past, but adapt and transform into the future without necessarily forgetting the past. So what is happening in Africa, those who want to resist this are certainly going, are not going to win. The change in Africa has come. The change in Sadiq has come. We've seen new leaders come up who believe in totally different political ethos, who believe in institution, who believe in the rule of law, who believe in the principles that we ourselves in Sadak set for ourselves. Not the Europeans, not the Americans. And the, the paradox of it all is that uh, actually Zimbabwe was at the forefront of crafting the Sadak guidelines on free and fair elections. If it was Lesotho, if it was Zambia, if it was uh, Malawi, it would have been a different story. It was Zimbabwe who were the chief sponsors of the SADAC protocols and guidelines on free and fair elections. And paradoxically, it is Zimbabwe that runs forth when those guidelines are applied. Isn't that a paradox? Well, thank you so much. Thanks so much. Yes. Honest, I have many speakers want to speak and ask questions to you this morning. Uh, let's try to maybe... Uh, take okay, I'll be brief. I'll be brief. I'll be brief. Yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, maybe let's take another speaker there this morning. Carlos, good morning. Hey, asbong, 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 asbong. Weka, kiss, asbong. Good job, good job, in Belewa, I got the Allah from Ufelwa. Snabe Silver Sula, I got to see a Gula Silla as born a million da. Umbus Ami Gubus Ochona, Umbebenzella, Ufaga E. M. Fas, Yatella, Ufagi M. Fas, Guma area Zangani, a superbanning, the into a structure. We could mean, but I feel you have to emphasize it again. I'm from a constituency. As I speak right now, there is a meeting on the 14th that is going. Yeah. The people are going to meet there. So when people say there are no structures, <laughs> structure is not defined by what you see in ZANU PF and what was in the MTC or still is in the MTC. Into a good structure. We emphasize that there are people here that I know after this one, we are going to have a space somewhere. We have a space somewhere. We have a space somewhere. So, the organized who crowd, Islam cluster leaders, Islam street champions, Islam eh, provincial coordinators, what you have done? Nationally, you have leadership, you have done a big way, you have done incidents, you have done a lot of things. You have done a spokesperson, you have done a lot of things. You have done a diplomatic mission, you have done a lot of Okay, 
Well, thank you so much, Mr. Mkwananzi, for responding to Carlos. Now, let's hear from another speaker. Guys, please remember, let's be brief and one question so that we give others a turn. Good morning, Brighton Hove. Good morning. Good morning, uh, right, Tim. The uh, Romo Romo CC. I promise. Really enough respect to you. Acknowledge me. Don't say that. Come on. Don't say that. The name is Mavi Rimatatu. Romo Romo CC. Nyairi po yakamira so. One of the key things I need to highlight across to you, uh, Comrade Promise, is uh, from the redeployment perspectives, there is one mm -hmm. key that's coming out. The president yes. has the president redeployed. Is there collegiality within C? Why is it everything is central to one person? That's one critical question that I would like you to answer. As the Number two, I'm hearing the key theme again within the regional perspective, within mm -hmm. the outside in terms of external to CCC, changes, mm -hmm. changes coming to, C, uh, so, 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 to the region, changes coming to SADC, change is imminent. Mm -hmm. But why is it that change is not important in CC? That's the second question. Okay. Is it, why is it difficult for the colleagues in CCC now to say, Comrade President, you have given this a good shot. It's not to say you have done so bad. You have given this a good shot as colleagues. Perhaps, maybe probably maybe Roma elections in. Maunero avacha misa. Akati siya nei. Ne mamwe e umwe acha uya. Ati suki zeo tindiyan. We leave that prerogative to you. But maunero ya anu guna kuti siya nei. Why is it that it's difficult for change to happen? Change of leadership to happen in Triple C. Nei wa ayo. Well, thanks so much, Brighton. Before you respond to that promise, let's go to another speaker. Uh, the mm -hmm. issue of change now, this speaks about the issue of Congress, right? Let's go to another speaker there. Amanda Douglas, good morning. Good morning. Uh, promise, I just wanted to go back. I had asked earlier on is uh, that you've won the councils, you've won uh, most of the metros. Uh, you've spoken that you you stand your territory, you're not going to budge uh, uh, to the government. What is, what is it that you're going to do differently uh, this year with the new elected councillors, mayors in Harare, in Blawa, and all the major metropolitans that you haven't done differently? Because as we, as we go ahead now, the minister of uh, local government is going to be a ZANU PF minister. You're still going to be reporting under them. What are you going to be dif doing differently to make sure that our local councils are going to be run smoothly? Uh, if you could please clarify on that one, please. Uh, can May I please? To question, promise. Yeah, you can respond. Yeah, because, because I'll end up forgetting the other question. Um, my brother Brighton, I can assure you that there is collegiality to, to borrow from you and alignment in the triple C under President Nelson Chamisa. There is no question, there is no dispute, there is no disagreement on that. And in the foreseeable future, there will be no question, there will be no dispute, and there will be no disagreement on that. In terms of our internal democracy, um, my brother, Triple C, you do remember that I was also in the MDC as the youth leader in the MDC at the time. And I can speak authoritatively on the internal democracy aspect of both uh, eras. In the MDC, we had, we had a very rigid structure. Huh? the president, the chairman, you know, the traditional structures that we've come to know in political party. And the problem there was that you just had to follow the structure. On the contrary, now we've got a very fluid, so to speak, 
very fluid structure, which gives opportunity to talent. Huh? You don't have to be a chairman to climb onto the platform and provide leadership. And there can only be one chairperson. But in this instance, if you are a champion, let's say a street champion, let's say a provincial champion, you have the opportunity to step up to the platform and showcase your talent. And people can recognize that this is a talented leader. He must serve in this area or, or, or that area. And that explains why we have, we have had a lot of young leaders emerging. And I want to commend President Chamisa for giving the opportunity to young people. I think it's imperative. And I think it's important to give the opportunity to young people. We've got some of the youngest parliamentarians coming on board. Some of the youngest councillors coming on board. Huh? And I, 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 I personally think that it's a good thing and it cannot happen if there is no internal democracy to allow for that transfiguration political transfiguration you know we are not saying no to the old but we are also opening the opportunity to young people and you will see a very beautiful admixture of young leaders and experienced leaders. And it's important. President Chamisa has just won an election. I don't see the logic of, 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 of even raising the question of leadership within the party at this point in time. And I don't see anybody within the party aspiring to replace President Nelson Chamisa at this point in time. I would be surprised. You saw the energy, you saw the charisma, you saw the agility as he trans transversed the four corners of our country in one of the most robust and sophisticated campaigns we've ever seen. And we cannot then say, because Zeke announced fake results, we must change leaders. No. Then but lastly... Thank you, so much, thank you so much for that. I'm going to come to you. Uh, there are many requests. There are many questions coming through. Uh, let's let's take, let's take well, more questions. There was a question about local government, which I think is important. Yeah, yeah please do go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the, our local authorities are guided by certain principles that we have developed and the president is given direction to. There will be no mercy on any councillor or MP or any party deployee for that matter who is implicated in corruption. No matter who you are, the president was going to crack as a hard whip on corrupt deployees. And I think that all our deployees are aware of that. And you see as well the appointment of mayors. The president has been very deliberate and he is going to make sure that we've got the best uh, 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 personnel. Look at Blauer, for example. He has put in sen former senator David Coulter very few people will doubt his credibility. Uh, he was a leader in the Ministry of Education. You saw the impact. And I, as, a, as a resident of Blauwai myself, I'm very, very optimistic that Blauwai will never be the same.
Thank you so much for that from some comments. But also speaking of mayors, there's been this huge talk nonsense about what uh, there's been imposition of mayors, right? To say the leader of the Triple C imposed and said this so and so is going to be the mayor of the seat, right? Is that, is it that democracy and taking away uh, the issue of voting and so on and giving others I mean to say imposing a candidate to become the mayor? And is it is it democracy within Triple C? No, mayors are not imposed. Look, if you elect a president, you must give him the mandate to lead. Huh? You can't say there is a president and he's not leading. I don't know how how how, how, how that would, would work out. I think my question, <laughs> is, my question is when the president announced during the rallies, right, to say Colter is going to be the mayor of Bulawayo, right? But in the previous times, we have known that uh, councillors elect a mayor and deputy mayor in the chambers. But now when the president says so and so is going to be the mayor, is that part of democracy going forward? Look, the president is the ultimate accounting authority of the party. And if the president does not provide leadership, the party will be in, in disarray. The party will be in disarray. The residents of Blawa had a lot of issues in the past. Huh? About the former mayor's Blawa was going down. You know that, my brother. Service delivery is going down. And the president must just sit and say, mayors must just, another guy just comes with a bag of money, buys councillors, become mayor, and so on and so forth. I don't think that is the right direction. So the president, I think he was 100% correct to identify, to be proactive in identifying mayors, not just in Blaue, but across the country to say, we think so and so, based on their track record in industry, in their career, and personally, they are better placed to provide the leadership that attests to the ethos and principles that Triple C wants to demonstrate in the country. Right, thank you so much for that response. But yeah, mm -hmm. quite confusing. The earlier one spoke about men of integrity leading in councillors, but now I think they're being, being bought. Quite confusing. Mm -hmm. They're like more speakers, this body, not center. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's see from uh, Triple C, <laughs> Namibia. Munamatu, please do quite a contribution. Good morning, Brighton. Good morning, non uh, All clear your end. Yes, we're clear. So please do go ahead. One question, and then you can... Lovely, uh, lovely. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I uh, promise, uh, thank you for being here. And thank congratulations you. on the populist vote and winning the most constituencies in Bulawayo. Mine thank is you, on the way forward, uh, specifically for Bulawayo. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So what is the direction under CCC leadership and what is the vision for Bulawayo and what is the direction in relation to economy, uh, politics, family, religion, uh, arts and entertainment, the whole seven mountains aspect, if you know what I'm uh, referring to. Um, so in Bulawayo, what is the direction and what is no, the I vision? The last part. Sorry? Say the what? Say the what? The last part. The seven mountains, the seven mountains of the society, the seven mountains of any society, specifically okay. for Bulawayo. We're talking about politics, religion, mm -hmm. economy, family, arts and entertainment, culture, and community as a whole. And what okay. is the direction and the vision of uh, Bulawayo, for Bulawayo, and where are we going? And in your articulation, may you please explain it as if you're explaining to a two-year-old so that within our places of influence we can be able to continue the conversation and carry the conversation forward uh was that clear enough it was it was thank you promise but, me yeah. well you know that you know culturally and historically is a very rich territory mm -hmm. and a proud people uh, were proud of their history are proud of their culture and proud of themselves. But above all, I think that Blawa, people, the people of Blawayo have been very consistent and very clear on, on ensuring that they are not associated with the rotten establishment of Zanapiv. 
And this, by the way, is in spite of all the violence that Blauai people have been subjected to historically. So they are resilient people. And we want to commend the people of Blauayo for that resilience going into the future. And I think as a party, we owe it to the people of Blauayo to deliver to the best of our ability on our promise to them during the electoral campaign. We owe it to the people of Blauayo to defend that territory with everything that is permissible in a democratic society. And you know that the people of Lawai have been treated as second citizens in this country for a long time. To get a birth certificate, you have to come to Ara. A birth certificate. To get an ID, you have to travel to Ara. I cannot even mention bigger things. There is even a narrative that to have money, you must come and work in Ara. And that is regrettable. That is regrettable. So we are going to ensure, uh, I know there is a, there will be a, some minister put there to continue to cause problems for Blauayo and for other local authorities in Zimbabwe. But we are going to make sure that there is devolution. I think that devolution is going to be central to our strategy in ensuring that not just Bulawayo, but Matebelele and Desert War, and indeed all the other provinces of our country, to ensure that local resources And I was saying to your colleagues some other day that I think that Bulawayo Promise, Mongoli, Mongoli. is the most liberated uh, province in the entire country. It's a no-go area for Zanupi. But most interestingly, Mr. Mkwana, can you hear us from your end? Okay, well, looks like we're having connectivity problems there. But, well, let's hear from Promise Munguli while we wait for Mr. Mkwananzi to reconnect. Good morning, Promise. Good morning, we morning. We have lost our guest there. Let's try to read some of the comments coming through from the space this morning to try to wait for our guest to join us again. Uh, I'm seeing a comment coming from Net, the uh, Maleka Diva says, but how on how do how do they circumvent <coughs> the sovereignty uh, issue? What can Sata do to arm um, twist the fresh elections? How can uh, how are they engaging citizens? That's quite uh, coming from Net there. And also uh, Net also says, no, let me take another one. Uh, Nube says, they are just politicking lava. I'm very sorry for those Abalama Wopsigubo. And Mapoko says, understandably, Triple C refused to take uh, instructions uh, from Zanu. But at some point, uh, there has been an agreement and an order to serve citizenry. What can be done to achieve, uh, what can be achieved now, considering the inauguration is done? Uh, where will the Calvary help come from? And I see someone saying, uh, loving promise response here. Well done, Mr. Promise and Kwanazi, uh, for those response. And so, Tabiso says, it's very confusing there. And uh, the guess says, what's your vision for young people in Bulai who are unemployed, Mr. Mkwananzi? And Livet Mutsingenyama uh, says, do you believe the local authority and parliamentary election results were true? And then uh, lastly, uh, Comrade Tafi says, this mayor issue is dictatorship by Chamisa. And then I'm trying to get one more last uh, comment. They come from Promise Mukuli. Uh, to answer about the corrupt councillors, we had quite a number of councillors who didn't implicate uh, themselves into corrupt deals. Uh, for example, Victoria Falls in Kanye was being uh, truly rejected these, those deals, and he is the right candidate for mayorship at this time. Wait for them. Let's try one more time with our guest. Let's go to Skolo Matubula. Good morning, Skolo Matubula. Good morning. Good morning. Right, guys, please give me a hand if you can hear me this morning. Call him a tool, please do go ahead. Uh, 
Bro, I had a question uh, on um, uh, corrupt de deployees and uh, the, 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 the people of Lawai, what, what, what is this going to do for them after they are in sleep? But I think that has been attended to, even though it wasn't food. So now, now my question on, on who promise you would be uh, a lot of intimidation uh, they are they are members of the and all those who uh who are not part of uh, the ruling party what is is triple c doing to 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 attend to those uh, intimidations because the intimidations we know that they they carrying on even after the, the elections mm -hmm. so i just want to really take on that one Hello. Hello. Yeah, you can respond. You can respond. Promise. We can hear you. Can respond. Okay. Thank you. I might have missed some of the questions because of the connectivity issue. But um, from what I gather, um, the intimidation question, just to contextualize it, how do you say you have won elections and you are very happy in celebrating in court? But we are beating up people. It shows that there is something missing. Why are you angry, Mr. Mnangago? Why are you vindictive? Why are you intimidating people? Because you know that people did not vote for you. And I saw a uh, site uh, tweeting last night that in Umguza, some malcontents, some PF malcontents there, we're sending voice notes on, 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 on WhatsApp groups threatening to displace uh, people who had been allocated land there because they, were, they did not vote for them. This just, I just wanted to contextualize this to show you that the vindictiveness and anger coming out is because that Mr. Blankawa actually knows that people did not vote for him. And as he sits on that throne, which is not his. He is afraid. And the only way to express that fear is to go out there, send malcontents, send thanks to intimidate the people. Because he's afraid that the people are organizing themselves, reorganizing themselves to reclaim their victory and to find expression of their vote. Now, the intimidation, we have put out there without disclosing much, peace ambassador. And whenever our people feel threatened or they hear this or that, they, in those areas, contact us, our peace ambassadors will be in place to provide security and protection to the peace-loving generality of, of our people. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Mkwananzi, for responding to that question. Now, let's hear from another speaker. Ndlovu, good morning. Ndlovu, are you there? Okay, let's move on to Triple C Namibia. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, Zimbabwe. Good morning, fellow listeners from across the region, world, etc. All right, I think first of most of our speakers there this morning. But yeah, let's move on with the show this morning. I hope guys can hear me this morning. But also, Hello. Mr. Mkona, let's speak about the issue of V11. Hello. There's been much talk about issue there of V11. Mm -hmm. uh, does Triple C have V11 to maybe, if they're going to court or taking the diplomacy uh, route, is does Triple C have V11? Yes, we have the V11. We certainly have the V11s in total. Uh, and they, they show that Mr. Mnangagwa did not win the election. The only problem is that it's pointless to take them to, <laughs> to the court of Mr. Malawi, Justice Malawi, because Mr. Malawi is not going to look at that. He was actually waiting for us to bring that before the court so that he can pay back his master, Mr. Mnangagwa, who, just before elections, uh, actually provided them with more than 400,000 US dollar uh, token, yeah? which is not part of their 
uh, benefits of service which is no legal basis and which is totally unaccounted for. You also know that Mr. Justice Malaba was supposed to have retired. And there is a clear court judgment that uh, the, when you have reached 70, you must retire. And if ever there is a change in that law, it must not benefit the incumbent. So let's say, for example, there was merit in changing the law to say, no, a judge can go up to this distance. It was not supposed to then directly benefit Mr. Malam. All those things and many others were violated. So there was going, only going to be one outcome at the court. And when you see uh, uh, citizens no longer considering the court as the station of dispute resolution, as a court, you must ask yourself questions and you must introspect. All right, maybe let's take one more last speaker this morning before we wrap up the conversation this morning. I know you're a busy man, you have other things to do. Let's go to my book. My book, what's your contribution or question to Mr. Promise Mkwanas this morning? Thank you, Said. My question, uh, Promise, uh, the first one is, yes, as Uti, you were wanted in court for Amanya Matala. Has that been concluded? Uh, and then my other question, uh, Promise, on these Twitter spaces, many people discuss the politics. And one of the things that has come up... Hello? Is no... Can you hear me? Yes, Maboko, we can hear you. Uh, Mr. Mkwananzi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Maboko, please do go ahead. If he doesn't get your question, then we'll ask him again. Okay. So my first question was regarding the criminal charges against him, whether he's managed to conclude those. And then my second one is that on Twitter spaces, there's con continuous conversations about... Uh, all this uh, politicking that's happening and whether there's calvary that comes from anywhere uh, we hear the courts are captured we hear that there's no help that will come from the west or from the southern region so I mean I can conclude with you, at some point triple C has to agree Lezanu on how to work to help his cities our citizens so what can he share at the moment that they're willing to agree on? What is the Kubele Sia Pambit? Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Maboko. Uh, we seem to have lost Mr. Mkwananzi there, but we'll try and reconnect him. Uh, Mr. Mkwananzi, please do request the mic. Uh, we'll re-ask the, question the questions on behalf of Maboko so that you respond, as I said uh, earlier on. Right. In the meantime, let me just go through some comments coming through here from the space. And uh, Levet says, if Chamisa wins, win as you claim, Mr. Mkwananzi, why have you chose to take the diplomatic route and uh, not the legal one? If at any moment compelled to challenge the election outcome, do we have enough evidence to prove Zach a fake results? That's leave it there. And then uh, someone, Robson, says, is Tripsy going to, uh, to be in government? Right. I see another comment coming through. Uh, Some Lomo says, I would like, uh, I would have linked, uh, I would have liked to ask the post-spokesperson the following questions. What could be the reason that Chamisa is viewed as a puppet of the Western countries? Uh, what are the prospects of such nullifying uh, Zim elections? And does it have local standing? to do so and then someone says and all says what conf what's confusing there a very simple answer that said that's this logic and then uh, Renema Saru, uh, people we have uh, voted for which chamisa i suggested so the issue of imposition of course that is out of question there and uh someone is also asking here yeah, let me just see um Manda says i don't see any triple c members aspiring to take over president uh, Nelson chamisa says promise mkwana's there let's try to connect again promise promise did you hear my podcast questions around the issue of um your your court case uh, that was released by the police there and also remember the time when you're addressing the media where you the people came and disrupted you there and then later on they issued a statement to say you they will be looking for you again they've been how far with that court case Promise, try to unmute your mic and go ahead to the contribution. Okay. You know that I've been arraigned before the courts uh, for so long and on concocted and flimsy charges. I fully cooperated despite knowing that these were ridiculous charges. 
and I was acquitted on all court cases. There was no basis. I should not have been at the court in the first place. My view is that uh, after the disruption of the press conference uh, and how clumsy it, the whole thing was, and the, the, the you know the negativity which it drew to ZANPF, they were just trying to put out a propaganda there to try and criminalize me. Uh, you know, it, it didn't become, it wasn't sustainable. I saw Mati Gare and others saying, yeah, fugitive of the law, fugitive of the law, and so on and so forth. But I live in Zimbabwe. Uh, I've been in Zimbabwe since, I don't know, since I was born. Uh, and they are referring to some case in 2019, and so on and so forth. I've been to the courts, in solidarity with uh, colleagues, Jobs Kala, Jacob Ngari Vume, I meet and interact with the police. They know me because they've arrested me for so many times. Only to then say on the election. Day that day the police were looking for me. They are running scared. That's all. Well, thanks so much for that response, our comrade. Uh, Promise some corners with us. Triple C spokesperson there. Let's wrap up this this session this morning. Um, maybe the map will ask again on the issue of Calvary. We have seen Triple C leader tweeting uh, here and there saying help is on its way. Mr. Mkwanas, please confirm to us when is the help coming and where is it coming from? Is it diplomatic way or the courts? It's certainly not the courts. It's the diplomatic way and the political way. Huh? Those are the two pronged strategy that we are embarking on. The diplomatic way, engaging the, 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 the region in particular, but the whole of Africa and the international community to say that Zimbabwe, at the, at the epicenter of Zimbabwe's challenges, is the question of contested elections. For how long can you allow this to go on? And those contested elections have got far-reaching implications on the whole of SADC. In particular, South Africa, where Mr. Mbalula is running amok. I don't think that his views are in sync with the views of the generality of the people of South Africa. Certainly not. And I did see in Parliament uh, members of parliament questioning him on, on, on that. He, and he, he's behaving like someone who has been given money or he's benefiting from some deals. You know, he he's, he's, he's crying more than the bereaved. He's become the spokesperson of the spokesperson of Zanpia. And he's supposed to be the Secretary General of the African National Congress. One of the parties that played a pivotal role in ensuring that, you know, South Africa is, is liberated from apartheid with the help of Zimbabwe. And it was not ZANPF that was helping South Africa. It was the people of Zimbabwe. It was the people of Zimbabwe who bore the consequences of associating themselves with the ANC in South Africa for South Africa to, to end apartheid. And Mr. Mbalula must respect the people of Zimbabwe. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Mkwanansi, for coming through and responding to all the questions that we asked. Yeah, Yeah, there's a follow-up here coming through from someone. says, if uh, Nelson Chamisa, the leader of the Triple C, is given the position of the opposition in parliament, of opposition in parliament, will the party take that position? Well, that position belongs to Mr. Mnangago because Mr. Mnangago did not win the elections in Zimbabwe. And it is up to him to take it up or not take it up. Because his inauguration, as we say then and as we say now, is a monumental nullity.
Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mukana, for coming through and answering uh, our questions and responding uh, to all those comments. Uh, quite an interesting conversation we had here this morning. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining us on this morning on Asake. Remember, site is going to be live streaming the the triple the council block council uh, uh, swearing ceremony right here. Uh, please do follow site on our Facebook page on our YouTube channel and follow that live streaming where the councillors are going to be taking oath of office this morning. Mr. McConnell, thank you so much for uh, coming through uh, to the space this morning. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, citizens. I appreciate. It. Well, that brings us to the end of the space this morning. My name is Brighton. It's been love hanging out with you this morning. Yes, and. Uh Please, guys, if you're in Bulawayo on the 9th of September, don't forget the MMCA is inviting you um, to uh, the, the celebration of uh, the King's legacy in, uh, at um, Shashanjela, that is 22 uh, kilometers along uh, Gwanda Road. Uh, so please uh, do join us in this celebration. Remember to wear your traditional regalia. No uh, party, uh, you know, no party clothing is allowed. And uh,